base hit in left field. Here's Hap. They're going to hold him up. Oh, it gets under the glove of Jones. Hap is in. Suzuki is in. Morrell will stop at third. Now he's coming home. Oh, baby. So the crazy thing about baseball is that it's one sport where major leaguers can look like little leaguers. And this is one of those times. We've got runners on first and second. It's Rockies versus Cubs. One out. And we get a line drive to left field. Here comes the runner. He's going to round third. He's going to get held up here by the third base coach right there. But the ball goes under Jones's glove. And it's going to head all the way to the wall. So Jones tracks it down. At this point, now two runners have scored. He's going to pick the ball up. He's going to throw the ball in. Now, we have a tandem relay. This happens when a ball goes over an outfielder's head, into the corner sometimes. When we know that the batter runner automatically has a double, we're going to send two cutoff men out there. The reason we're doing it is because the throw is going to be very long. And because it's a longer throw, it could be less accurate. And now we have two cutoff men there. So here's the rule. If the ball is going to short hop the first cutoff man, you're supposed to let it go because it's going to bounce perfectly to the second cutoff man. Then he can catch it and throw it home or whichever base it needs to be thrown to. The other thing you're going to do is if it's over your head, well, it'll be perfectly thrown to, again, the second cutoff man. But what the Rockies do here is the first cutoff man, he tries to pick the ball on the short hop, which is a no-no. This ball should be let go, and it'll bounce perfectly to that second cutoff man. But he tries to pick it, it hits him in the shin, and ricochets over here. And not only that, if we back up here, this throw's coming from so far away, all this cutoff man has to do is move his feet. Why are his feet stuck in the mud this whole time? Read the throw. It's going to be a little short. Just step out and catch the ball in the air. We're always telling our infielders, catch the ball in the air when possible. This is such a long throw. He had plenty of time to step up, but he doesn't. He sits there, he sits there, he sits there, and now he tries to pick it. So he messed up by not reading the ball and catching it in the air. And then the second mess up was trying to pick a short hop instead of letting it bounce so that it goes right to the second cutoff man. So he pulls a Marty Brodeur, kick save and a beauty, ball bounces over here. Now the second cutoff man has to run over, pick it up, and he's got no chance. He's just going to whirl and throw it. And because it's the Rockies and they're struggling this season, well, they struggle pretty much every season. He's going to throw it 30 feet wide of the catcher, who's going to slide to catch it. He's going to miss it. The pitcher said, what am I even backing up for? It doesn't matter. We've already had 16 runners score on this play, so I'll just stand here, and the ball's going to hit off the wall. And the Cubs and all the fans are pumped up that we're back playing Little League Baseball again. So this was just a total mess right here. Fundamentally, we don't field the ball on the ground ball to the left fielder. Then we don't move our feet. Then we try to pick a short hop instead of letting it bounce so that the second cutoff man gets the long hop. And at that point, who really cares what we do? Might as well just take it and throw it out of the stadium. Anyways, you won't find defense this sloppy very often, and so I figured I'd throw it up here. And like I typically say, somebody please put a tent over this circus. That's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Give it a thumbs up. All that good stuff. We'll talk to you later.